In the third year of King Belshazzar's reign, I, Daniel, had a vision after the one that had already appeared to me. So again, we're in Belshazzar's reign or the kingdom of Babylon before the Medo-Persians had taken over. And this is a vision that Daniel received after, I assume, the one he just told us about in Daniel chapter 7, which was about the four beasts, which was concerning the four kingdoms. Babylon, Medo-Persian, Greek, and Roman. In my vision, I saw myself in the citadel of Susa, in the province of Elam. In the vision, I was beside the Ulai Canal. I looked up, and there before me was a ram with two horns. So this location, I think you can just say it's in modern-day Iran, uh, or the kingdom of Babylon in Daniel's day. Standing beside the canal, and the horns were long. One of the horns was longer than the other, but grew up later. All right, so this ram that had two horns is the Medo-Persian Empire. Each horn represents a, the kingdom, Medes and Persians. I believe the Persians came a little later. Uh, and the Persians were stronger. That's why the Persian horn would be longer. I watched the ram as it charged toward the west and the north and the south. No animal could stand against it, and none could rescue from its power. It did as it pleased and became great. So the Medo-Persian Empire spread from, I guess, from Iran, it went west, north, and south. The kingdom the Medo-Persian kingdom spread its borders in those directions. I don't know that for sure by history, but I'm assuming that's true. As I was thinking about this, suddenly a goat with a prominent horn between its eyes came from the west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. All right, so I generally think a ram is stronger than a goat. Rams seem bigger than goats. But this two-horned goat, which is the Medo-Persian empire, is encountering a one-horned goat. The one horn would probably be Julius, not Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, the Greek. And it's coming from the West. Greece is from the West. So I don't understand this not touching the ground business, but maybe that just is an indication of how fast they traveled uh, and conquered lands along the way. <laughs> but... The one-horned goat is Greece, with the leader or the horn being Alexander the Great. It came toward the two-horned ram I had seen standing beside the canal and charged at it in great rage. I saw it attack the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering its two horns. The ram was powerless to stand against it. The goat knocked it to the ground and trampled on it, and none could rescue the ram from its power. The goat became very great, but at the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place four prominent horns grew up toward the four winds of heaven. So I believe this uh, in history would support that Alexander the Great, at the end of his reign, there were four lesser kings in the Greek empire that ruled <coughs> excuse me so i believe that's what the four horns are after alexander the great in the greek empire or on the one-horned goat that became the four-horned goat uh, is the greek empire with alexander the great and his successors out of one of them came another horn which started small but grew in power to the south and to the east and toward the beautiful land so that's the south, the east, and toward Jerusalem, or I assume west. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry host down to the earth and trampled on them. It set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifice from the Lord, and his sanctuary was thrown down. All right, so... I just read something that leads me to believe that 
this great horn would be Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, he was a Greek ruler uh, during the Maccabean Revolt. Uh, and this particular battle would be in reference to the Maccabean Revolt and the Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, who was the Greek leader who found out about the revolt and he rushed in, I think, from Egypt uh, and regained control of his kingdom. Uh, and he also uh, put an end to the daily sacrifices of the Jews and uh, affected the worship of the Jews in the temple. Because of rebellion, the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. Okay, so the daily sacrifice stopped. And I think this is what happened under Antiochus Epiphanes, who was in a Greek, which is during the time of this goat. It prospered in everything it did, and truth was thrown to the ground. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to him, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? The vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation, the surrender of the sanctuary, and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. All right, so you got to look at that question. How long will it take for this vision to be fulfilled? This vision of uh, the ceasing of the daily sacrifices the desolation of the temple, um, the surrendering of sanctuary, and the trampling on the foot of the Lord's people. And at this time, I guess that would be the Jews. Uh, the Jews in the temple and the worship in the Jew Jerusalem temple. He said to me, it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be reconsecrated. All right, so I like the way this one reads. The NIV actually reads more accurate than what other ones I've seen, because most of or some other ones will say twenty three hundred days, but it's possible that it's not days. But they but they had to do an evening sacrifice and a morning sacrifice, which would be why this says twenty three hundred evenings and mornings. So how many sacrifices will be interrupted by this rebellion? It would be twenty three hundred. That doesn't mean 2,300 days. It would actually be 1,150 days if you're having two sacrifices per day. It would be 2,300 sacrifices or 1,150 days, which would be about three years. So 2,300 years is about six years, and half of that is about three years. Uh, and I think this three years is probably not the same three and a half years that was mentioned during the Roman Empire because in Daniel chapter 7 it says there's time times and half a time during the Roman Empire uh, where bad things will happen and here this is talking about during the Greek Empire there's going to be three years of sacrifices that will be interrupted in the temple that they won't be able to offer these two times daily sacrifices for three years while i daniel was watching the vision and trying to understand it there before me stood one who looked like a man and i heard a man's voice from the ulai calling gabriel tell this man the meaning of the vision as he came near the place where i was standing i was terrified and fell prostrate son of man he said to me Understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. Now the son of man. <laughs> son of man is retained as a form of address here because of its possible association with the son of man in the New Testament. So Jesus referred to himself many times as son of man. And I think that comes from this reference here in Daniel. Uh, the angel talked to Daniel and said son of man. He called Daniel the son of man. Um, and that might have something to do with why Jesus referred to himself as the son of man. Maybe that Jesus was here in fulfillment of Daniel's prophecies. And he says, understand the vision concerns the time of the end. Now certainly, I would not apply to this 
that this is talking about the time of the end of the earth when earth will be cease to exist and time will be no more. It would be talking about the end of the age, uh, which will be the, the Jewish age. These, these visions are concerning the end of the age. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Then he touched me and raised me to my feet. He said, I am going to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath because the vision concerns the appointed time of the end. Let's see what this note says. Or because the end will be at the appointed time. So there was the end of the age was at an appointed time. It would be when Jesus came and ended the age, ended the Jewish age and established his eternal kingdom. So these visions are concerning the end of the age, at which would come at an appointed time. The two-horned ram that you saw represents the kings of Media and Persia. All right, so I, I knew it said this, so I know when we read earlier, when it talked about the two-horned ram, it was the Medo-Persians, with one of them being higher than the other, which was like the, uh, the bear in Daniel chapter 7, who had one one side higher than another, is the Medo-Persian Empire. These visions Daniel received were concerning kingdoms, uh, world kingdoms that would immediately uh, follow the Babylonian kingdom. The shaggy goat is the king of Greece. All right, so there was no assumption there either. The goat is the Greek Empire, or Alexander the Great. And the large horn between its eyes is the first king. That's Alexander the Great. So the goat is Greece, and the large horn by itself is Alexander the Great. The four horns that replaced the one that was broken off represents four kingdoms that will emerge from his nation, but will not have the same power. In the latter part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce-looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. And this sounds like Antiochus Epiphanes, who was a Greek leader, and the Jews rebelled against her, uh, the Greek rule during the Maccabean Revolt, and Antiochus Epiphanes put an end to it. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. No one ever becomes strong by his own power, but it's it's good that this is put here to reinforce the idea that whoever has power has power by the God. God is the one who gives power. So if anyone has power, God gives it. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, the holy people. He will cause deceit to prosper, and he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. If anyone is ever destroyed, they're not destroyed by human power. Even though it may look like human power does it, God is the one who uh, actually does it. The vision of the evenings and mornings that has been given you is true, but seal up the vision, for it concerns the distant future. It's important that you pay attention to time stamps. Daniel was told that this was going to be in the distant future. Now, there's no indication whether that's 10,000 years or 100 years or 1,000 years. Uh, but you can know that I guess it would be easy to assume that it's not going to happen during Daniel's lifetime. Uh, and it was even told, I mean, it was told that we're talking about during the Babylonian kingdom, he's told that this is going to be a Medo-Persian kingdom followed by a Greek kingdom. And during the Greek kingdom, uh, there's going to be a revolt and an end to the daily sacrifices. So obviously it's not going to happen during Daniel's lifetime. It says, seal it up. It's going to be many years into the future, after you're dead. 
I, Daniel, was worn out. And that's important, particularly because when you look at Revelation, the book of Revelation says many, many times that these things are about to take place. They're at the door. It's happening soon. Uh, this imminent time. In fact, John is told, do not seal up the words of this prophecy because it's just about to happen. So the book of Revelation is written right before the, the, its fulfillment. But this prophecy of Daniel is written many hundreds of years before its fulfillment. I lay exhausted for several days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond understanding. It's hard to understand the future. We can look back and see how things lined up and how appropriate it is, and it's not that distressing. But for Daniel, uh, it would be hard for him to understand fully how these things were going to play out or when they were going to play out. So I don't understand everything about Daniel 8, but it seems like it's talking about a revolt during the time of the Greek Empire. And I believe that would fit in with the Maccabean Revolt uh, and the Greek ruler Antiochus Epiphanes. 